Reading a character in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, first step is contacting your Game Master and having them generate a character sheet for you. You can do that by taking a look at the character's directory and selecting their character sheet. Next step is, after you've selected the character sheet that they created for you, is going to be going over to the journal entries and selecting the character creation guide. The character creation guide will describe how you create a character step by step. Very easy. Next step is going over to the chat log and selecting C-H-A-R, that means slash C-H-A-R, and this will begin the character creation process. First step is selecting a race, a species. If you select role, this will generate a random species for you. And if you select one of these attributes here, you'll select that particular race. If you select role, you get bonus experience, which is what I'm going to do, but feel free to pick anything that you want. Um, so you're seeing it's going to roll and it's going to generate a human. Next step is deciding what kind of human. A default human or a Reichlander. A Reichlander lives in a specific region in the Warhammer universe, which is what I'm going to do. Reichlander specifically lives inside the Empire in a specific province toward the south, uh, southwest. Uh, next step is going to be selecting the attributes. You can decide whether or not you want this distribution of attributes or if you want to rearrange them, that means swap something out. For example, swap this 32 for a 30 at the cost of 25 experience, or you can re-roll it. That means you go over here and you select right letter again at the cost of 50. If you don't do anything, you get a bonus 50 experience, which is what, exactly what I'm going to do. But if you choose to reallocate, then you can rearrange, then you, of course, only take 25. And if you choose to re-roll, you only get none. All right, so I've dragged it over. Done. Next step is going to be distributing your three extra meta points. So you'll take a look here and you'll see that Fate is 2 and Resilience is 1. Take a look at your main page, you'll see that Fate is 2, Resilience is 1. Three extras, that means you can increase these by 3. So for example, if I want to increase my Fate by 3, I simply hit that 3 times, left click, and that will increase Fate by 3. On the other hand, you can also choose to increase Resilience by 3 instead. So you can go 1, 2, 3, and this will increase Resilience. Uh, for myself, I like to include a balance, so I'll go and include Resilience by 1, and I'll prove Fate by 1, which will give 3 and 3. These Fate points, Resilience, Fortune, Resolve, you'll learn more about them later on in the Combat Guide, and also in the Skills Guide, so don't worry about it. Uh, next step is going to be selecting your career. Now, this is simple, by selecting the Career button here, just left click it, and it'll bring up all the career options. The first thing you're going to have to choose is whether or not you want this first career that you rolled. So do you want to be a witch hunter? A witch hunter is a fantastic career, so I would say yes. But if you don't know, simply left click this description tab and it'll give you a breakdown of what the career does. Now let's say you wanted to be a witch hunter. Well, you would evaluate whether or not you like the rangers class, whether you like the witch hunter group, whether you liked being in the status of Silver One, whether you liked for specializing in these particular characteristics, whether you like these skills, and whether you like these talents. If you don't know much about them, you simply right click those skills and talents and it'll give you a description. Sorry, left click them, and it'll give you a description. So it's charm, it's cool headed, you can give, a, you can give an idea of what this has. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that over and select current. So now I have that. I'm also going to drag over this 50 bonus experience. That's how much experience I get for choosing the first one. Now let's say you didn't want to choose the first one. Well, you can also re-roll that character, that career, and that means you get two more options to select from. So now you could be a pauper, which is essentially a beggar, you could be a grave robber, or you could be a witch hunter. Very cool. But you only get 25 experience this time, not 50. So if you were to drag the pulper over and select that career, you only get 25. Now let's say you didn't want to be any of those. You can choose a career, and you can choose anything that you want. Pretend you wanted to be a, I don't know, you wanted to be a soldier. Well, you can choose that soldier, and now you can drag and drop the soldier over if you wanted to. But you don't get any experience. So that's the, that's the downside there. All right, next step is going to be uh, selecting your attributes. Now your attributes are your career attributes specifically. You can allocate a total of five advances to your career attributes. You go over here and you'll notice that there's a plus button by some of these attributes here. So for example, in weapon skill, in toughness, and in willpower. I can go and increase that by a total of five. So I'm going to go ahead and increase weapon skill by one. I'm going to increase toughness by two. And I'm going to increase willpower by two. One plus two plus two, five. All right, after that, I'm done. Next is gonna be selecting your skills and talents. So let's go back to the original attributes rule and select skills and talents. I hit that button. It'll bring up the skills and talents I can improve just because of I'm in the human race. 
So I would recommend going to the skills first and I would left click these grayed out skills. These are your career skills. You want to activate them because you're in that career you automatically get these skills. Next step is your race skills. Your race skills you want to go ahead and drag them over. Three of them you get plus three, plus five in, and three of them you get plus three in. So for example, animal care, I can drag that over and add plus five to that, or I could add plus three. You choose which ones you want to improve on. So animal care, I'm going to say yes, maybe evaluate, I'm going to give plus five. Uh, maybe I don't want to haggle, maybe I want to have a language, so I put in the Bretonian language. Uh, let's say maybe I want to do leadership. I noticed that leadership's already in here, so I don't need to drag that over. Maybe I want to do melee basic, so I drag that over, and I have one more plus three, right? So I go ahead and drag the ranged bow over, and this will give me three. Very nice. Next is going to be talents. So I hit the talents tab here, and I go ahead and just drag these over. If you want to know more about these, simply right-click them, and you'll get a description of what they do. Uh, you can also left-click them. Uh, the grayed out ones, you have to left-click. The the black ones, you can right-click, and this will give you a description of what they do. So just drag these over to your character sheet when you're ready. All right, and you can also have a you can also just you know take a look at the description while it's in your character sheet as well by left-clicking them. So don't worry. Next is selecting your career talent. So you can go ahead and just left-click this. Uh, if you're not sure what these do, you can just right-click them and it'll give you a description of what they do. Um, so in order to activate them, just left click it and then select free and this will automatically give it to you and this gives you plus five to willpower. Very nice. All right, next step is going to be your uh, improvements to your skills. So as when, because you're in that career, you're normally performing your job and when you're performing your job, you improve your skills. You have a total of 40 advances to increase your starting eight skills but none of them can be above 10. So none of the advances can be above 10. What I like to do is I like to increase all eight of my starting skills by five, which gives me a total of 40, exactly what I need. So I'd go over here, I would, I would target the ones that have a plus button by them, and I would add five to the advances for all of them. And this will give me a total of 40. You can, you can change this up if you want. You could say, for example, if you wanted to give mm, plus 10, to brawling, then I would have to take that out of my other. I would, for example, not get that bonus to intuition, so this would be a zero, but brawling would be plus 10, so that'd be very nice. Next step is gonna be trappings. Trappings describes what your starting items are. Now you'll notice, you can go over to the trappings tab, this describes everything you own. Now you'll notice that a witch hunter actually comes with some starting items. It comes with a hand weapon, and it comes with instruments of torture. Ooh, that sounds pretty uh, gruesome. But let's go with hand weapons. So I go ahead and go over to the journal uh, compendium packs. I scroll down to the trappings. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and search for hand weapon here. All right, hand weapon. I just drag it over. Next, I'm going to search for instruments of torture. Now, if there isn't an instruments of torture in here, then you can simply just ask your DM to create you one. Ask your game master. You can go over to the items directory and drag that in if you wanted to. So for example, Instruments of Torture, I have that created, you can drag that over. Now if the DM is not available at the moment, you can go ahead and create a custom item. Just click this plus button and it will create a new item. Just rename this by clicking the edit item. Just rename it to whatever you need. So you can do that as well. Either one is fine. Okay, so now you've added those two items, which are the only two items I believe that the Witch Hunter gains. Uh, yeah. Next you have to do that for your trappings determined by your class. You'll notice that your class is a ranger. Now as a ranger you get access to certain starting items which are defined right there. So you go back to trappings, you have to define them. So for example here you have a cloak, you have clothing, uh, you have a dagger and a pouch. And a backpack containing a tinderbox, blanket, and rations, right? Alright, so adding those items over, nothing to worry about, and they should all be in the pack. Alright, after that, you should see that they're all in your inventory. You should. You'll notice that your encumbrance, the measure of how much you can carry, is very high. It's 5 out of 6. You can reduce that by just simply equipping all your items. When you equip your items, you put them on your back, which makes it easier to carry them. 
uh, just make sure that it makes sense. So, for example, you can't carry, you know, ten uh, great swords on your on your back. That doesn't make sense. So, make sure it's realistic. Besides that, feel free to do it. Next is going to be determining your starting money. So, go over to the chat log and you can roll. So, I'm a silver one. I'll take a look at how much money I start with in that class. So silver, I get 1d10 silver shillings per status level. I'm a silver, I'm a status level 1. That means I roll slash r 1d10, and this will give me my starting silver. My starting silver is 4, so I go over here into trappings. I scroll up to money. I hit this edit button. And I type in 4 here. And then I'll hit consolidate, and this will consolidate the money, but it's already done that, so you're done. Next is going to be selecting your adding detail. So adding detail is going to be, uh, you know, such as eye color, age, height, white. So I go over here, I select the details button, and this will generate a book uh, distribution for what a human is. So it'll generate a random book character. You can feel free to customize this however you wish. I would recommend it because you're going to be playing as this character in the Warhammer simulation. So feel free to do that. If you choose to do random, just go ahead and drag and drop this over. Next step is going to be determining your motivation. Now motivation is a little bit trickier. It defines a broad concept. So go back over to general entries and click on the motivations, uh, motivations handout. And this will give you a good idea of what a motivation is, how it changes, uh, how, to how to role play as it, and certain examples. There's a ton of examples in that you can have. Go ahead and just copy and paste whichever one you want or create one. And go over to the notes section, go over to biography and just paste it in. Why is the motivation important? A motivation helps you recover resolve. We'll talk about that later in the combat guide and the skills guide, so don't worry about it right now. Just know it's important. Next step is going to be choosing a short-term and long-term ambition. Short-term and long-term ambition you write down right here. And these are a few prompts for something that you could pick, but feel free to pick anything that you want as long as it is reasonable. So for example, if you picked a short-term ambition of like kicking over a stone, that'd be pretty ridiculous, right? So keep it realistic. But besides that, everything's good. Avenging a fallen comrade. So let's say I lost one of my witch hunters to a um, a corrupt wizard. So I want to make sure I take that take that wizard uh, take that wizard in and exterminate their entire uh, covenant. Um, I also want to writing the colleges of magic of elven influence. So pretend I'm a witch hunter that is predisposed to hate elves. Uh, that makes sense, right? I'm not an elf. I'm a human. I'm also a witch hunter, which naturally is predisposed to hate peoples of magic and elves specialize in magic so it makes sense okay so i've done those ambitions why are they important well if you complete a short-term ambition you get bonus experience if you complete a long-term ambition you get bonus experience plus 50 and plus 500 respectively but we'll come to why experience is important right after this uh, next step is going to be bring your character to life so there's 10 questions here that you should answer before your first game um, you can also feel free to improve it as you're playing um, go ahead and paste these into your notes section and fill out these questions as you are um, before your first game, as you're making your character. For example, where are you from? What makeup is your family? Go over here to bring your characters to life in the journal entries, and this will give you a breakdown of prompts of different ways people answer these questions that can make it interesting, make it easy. My personal advice is to make sure you write down something that you wouldn't mind sharing with your players, something that you would actually share. If you keep it secret the entire time, it, it gets old really big quickly. The whole point of this game is to interact, is to enjoy the Warhammer lore, and also to realistically immerse yourself in that world as if you're actually playing as a character there. So that's how I would recommend you structure it. Uh, after this, then I recommend you take a look at your advancements. This is when experience comes in handy. So you go over to the main tab and you have to spend 120 experience. You spend experience in order to improve your character. You can go over to the journal entries and select spending experience, this handout, and this will give you all the options you can use to spend experience in order to improve your character. For example, improving your characteristics, improving your skills, and giving you additional talents and so on, so on and so forth. Okay, so how do you do this? Well, one of the ways is spending experience to improve your characteristics for example for example weapon skill or toughness now note you can only improve uh, your characteristics associated with your career which is the ones with the plus or check mark by them in the beginning unless you ask your DM and they give you permission to do so in another way the reason why is because because you're specialized in a particular career you won't have an opportunity to learn other skills and other 
careers as readily. So it, there's a higher cost associated with that. Now I can go over here and I can simply hit this plus button and it'll automatically spend certain experience in order to improve that attribute. So for example, if I wanted to improve toughness, I just hit there and it gives me another one. For example, if I wanted to go over to skills and improve those skills, let's say I wanted to be a really prolific alcohol drinker. I go over here to this check mark and I just hit it. It spends 15 experience and it'll give me more. Hit it again, another 15 experience. So now I spent two more, I'm down to 40. So I'm going to go ahead and improve my toughness one more time. I spent 25 and I have 15 left to go back over to skills and maybe I spend it on heal, right? Gives it one more and boom, spent all of my experience and now my character is complete. All right, let's see, did I do anything? Did I do everything? I believe so, okay. Final step would just be like filling out these questions, right? Filling out these motivations and also working with your party in order to define what your party ambition is. This could be anything that you guys want. For example, you know, founding an apartment, completing a goal, assassinating a character, so many options here. And also a, stage, a place for motivation. So instead of posting a geography in biography, you can also post it down here as well. Whatever makes sense for you. Okay, um, and with that, feel free to fill in these things as well. They're lore specific, gender and weight. Uh, you can put something down uh, whenever you feel like it. Uh, no rush. But besides that, that's going to be it. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you have a great one.